Hi everybody, welcome back to Talk with TQ. And as, you, as always, I always have the most interesting guests that I can find on the planet. Recently, I found a wonderful shop in Peekskill, New York. Peekskill, New York. The name of the shop is Lily of the Valley Floral Design. So I know the website address is um, Lily of the Valley FD, okay, dot com. So if you want to find her, she's there. That'll probably put at the end. But her name is Pamela, and she is just the most delightful person. She's like a beautiful spring flower, I'll say. And I always enjoy coming in here and talking to her. Let's talk to her right now. Pamela, <laughs> you're here. We did it. Yes, How are you doing? You. Good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for Glad coming on. Here. You know, I'm so happy that there's a floral shop in Peekskill on South Street. It's a beautiful thing. You know, it's very hard to find one these days because people are usually just ordering something online and just, you know, trusting what they see in a picture. How did you get into this business? How did it all begin? Um, well, it began many years ago um, that I discovered that I had an interest um, in floral design. I won't take you all the way back to when I was a little girl and I put a seed in the ground and prayed. No, you can do that. <laughs> well, it really started when I was very young, a little girl and uh, growing up in Long Island. And we lived in a beautiful community and everyone had beautiful flowers in front of their yard. And I wanted some in our yard and uh, we didn't have any. And so I took a sunflower seed and planted it under a tree and I prayed and asked God to let it grow. And it never did. Um, because I didn't know you had to water it. And then uh, fast forward to, an, I'm a young woman now, married with children, and uh, 20 years ago, um, and my husband and I were moving into his mom's townhouse because she was retiring. And she had a beautiful garden in front of her townhouse. And uh, she commissioned me, she was like, Cam, I would like for you to take care of my garden. Um, and she gave me a beautiful Japanese maple about that size and uh, she told me to plant it and take care of it and the garden and and I did I took care of it watered it every day pruned and took care of everything and um, even got the other complex members involved to where they peaked an interest for gardening and started taking care of their yards and putting flowers out there and um, it started from there and then um, I went on to New York Botanical Gardens took classes and uh, was able to um, offer floral arrangements for ministry at church, um, at fellowship events. Um, and then from there, people would ask, oh, can you do a wedding? And I would get the opportunity to do a wedding here and there. And um, it started from there. And um, coming to Peekskill, I continued doing flowers, um, but I'm a full-time teacher, a special education high school teacher, so I really couldn't commit the kind of time that I wanted to, to my passion and my love. Um, so on a part-time basis, whenever I got events, I would do them, and um, I would work out of my home. Um, in my kitchen, my living room was the uh, floral cooler, the air conditioner was on all the time, <laughs> and um, everyone knew mommy commandeered the living room and the kitchen for flowers, so between cooking, arrangements were being made. From there, um, I had the opportunity to, you know, be introduced to other corporate clients like uh, Kathleen's Tea Room, who she happened upon me uh, at a uh, church event where she was catering. And uh, she loved what she saw, and she gave me my first opportunity uh, within Peekskill to have my flowers featured in an establishment. And um, it was a wonderful platform for me because there uh, I was able to secure New York Presbyterian Hospital. Uh, Nancy Cito, she frequented Kathleen's Tea Room, and she saw my work. And she was like, we would love for you to be a vendor at New York Presbyterian. And uh, I was like, absolutely. And. Um, she told me what I needed in terms of documentation, uh, which I didn't have. And it stepped up my game. And so I had to make sure that I got that documentation doing business as and an EIN number. And, uh, you know, not knowing, you know, you have, you, you have a passion. Yes, you have a hobby, but if you want to take it to the next level, you have to make sure that you have the credentials. And so that was my introduction to understanding the, uh, 
professional business side of it, what's required in terms of legal documentation to establish yourself as a legitimate business. So it's interesting, a lot of people go into business and they really don't understand that there is a protocol and it is often strict. I'm glad you did this. But I have to tell the audience, and I have to ask you about this, I went to your website mm -hmm. and it, I was just like all like thrilled. And I looked at what you do. Now, this is a floral shop. There are some obvious kinds of work that you'll get. It's obvious that you're going to get everything from a, a birth to a funeral. Right. And you, you take care of all that stuff. But when I went to your website, you have these areas. And I fell in love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I fell in love with two things on your website. Okay. I fell in love with the wealth and abundance arrangement with these luscious, beautiful, I know if they're tulips or roses and they're this sort of, I want to say, a yellow ochre color and this rich crimson. And I was like, wow, look at that. You know, you just look at that and you feel wealthy. <laughs> and then the other one I fell in love with, well, I could use that today. I could use it on many days is the, the pink, wait a minute, the pink passion restoration the pink restoration mm -hmm. the pink restoration mm -hmm. pink's like my favorite color mm -hmm. and i said wow i want both <laughs> so gorgeous you have like these names for things it's not what you would think it's mm -hmm. not just here's the sympathy bouquet here's the the baby shower bouquet you know what how did you come up with these names i there's even one called like crystal something a uh, crystal Crimson and Crystal. Yeah. Um, well, the names, the names are inspired by uh, actually my faith. So mm -hmm. um, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm an ambassador at Mount Olive Baptist Church, and um, a lot of my faith and my walk, I spend a lot of time, you know, reading the Word, being growing up as a preacher's daughter, and um, a lot of my inspirations come from the Bible. So they stem from there. That's at the root of it. And so when you hear something like Pink Restoration, um, actually that was a get well arrangement for uh, Minister Tuesday. She was under the weather a couple of years ago. And so they asked for an arrangement. And so when I thought about her, I thought, okay, she's restoring and so getting better. So I was like, you know, we're gonna call this Pink Restoration. And that's how I came up with the name and, you know, to be restored, to be healed and the wealth and prosperity. Um, the Wealth and Prosperity, that was an arrangement um, that I actually had made for um, a Beach Nails, their, their New Year, Chinese New Year. Chinese, yeah. And um, one of the things that's important to them is Wealth and Prosperity. So when I thought about Wealth and Prosperity, um, they mentioned some colors that are popular. And so I chose the rose and the yellow Alstomeria, and it just came together so well. And so I called it Wealth and Prosperity. What did you so. say, yellow alstomeria? Alstomeria. I've never heard that before. I looked at it and I said, as a painter, I said, oh, that's like yellow ochre. Some people call it yellow oxide, which is a rich, bright, like a full, mm. solid, I say luscious yellow. Yes. And so the alstomeria is the plant itself and it comes in a variety of colors. Okay. And is hardy. Um, it blooms multiple bloom heads and it lasts for at least 11 to 12 days if you take care of it. So it comes in yellows, oranges, pinks, purples, whites, just gorgeous colors. So you've learned a lot about horticulture, you really have. Yes, I would say- You know now, a lot. I, I know a lot about horticulture, but just actually watching and observing, watching uh, different uh, shows on TV, but also taking classes. But the courses stem to focus, seem to focus on um, making arrangements and the technique and methodology behind making certain types of arrangements. You know, so, and there's a whole nother side when we talk about horticulture, the caring for, uh, you know, flowers and hedges and trees, and all types of uh, greenery that we uh, look at, not just flowers, but also trees, shrubs and the like. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about that. <clears throat> Um, I know that I remember when I got married the second time to my beautiful husband and it was suggested to him that he wear a boutonniere and he said to me, he says, I am not going to wear the sex organ of a plant on myself. What do you think about that? You know, and I said, well, it's not, I don't think people are thinking of it that way, but he sure did. He understood. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, 
They understood it that way. I mean, I just wanted to speak to that because I never really understood why he wouldn't wear a boutonniere. I thought it would just look really classy. I don't know why he would feel that way. <laughs> um, when you talk about, I guess, photosynthesis yes. and the way you know plants plants germinate, I think in everything in creation you have male and female. Uh -huh. So it's not <laughs> anything I think that is foreign. Yeah. You know, it's a balance, right, mm -hmm. of nature and creation, mm -hmm. right? That everything is male and female, and from that we're able to reproduce and recreate. So I mean, it's really. A beautiful thing. It is. It's, I mean, I mean, I can imagine having a boutonniere and just pinning a boutonniere on my lover. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, it's sort of a romantic, it, sweet gesture. It is, you know, and you wear the corsage, right. either wrist or near and dear to your heart, you know, and he wears the boutonniere, and you know, it joins the two of you together sim symbolically as a flower, just as we wear right our wedding bands. He has a band. You have a band. Again, a symbol of you know oneness, two people becoming one. Yeah, yeah. There's something just so magical about flowers when you watch them. So what kind of customers do you have mainly right now? I know that we had Valentine's Day mm -hmm. a couple months ago. Well, I mean, Valentine's Day, we really had, um, I think it was, went pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, this is our first year out, so we're learning. You know, it's a learning curve for us, you know, trying to figure out how to uh, satisfy our customers and making sure that you have a nice balance between, you know, expenses and revenue, making sure you don't, you know, go overboard. But we've really had a lot of interest, people coming to the shop and they're really intrigued by, you know, the aesthetic of the shop because it's not your typical uh, florist shop that you would expect. Um, and uh, so they don't know if it's a gallery and they're like, when they come in, they see the artwork, they're like, is this a gallery? Or is this a florist shop? I'm like, it's both. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really both. Yeah. It's flowers in every um, way you can imagine them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're presented in art form, in picture form. Um, all of my work I put in picture form. So when I take pictures of flowers, garden in my backyard, or work that I've done for different events, I capture them in still shots and I display them not only for their beauty but for sale as well. And then I capture my work also in inspiration cards, Pamela Johnson inspirations. So you're inspired that way, you know. So the kind of people um, that come into the shop come from all walks of life, um, come from every, you know, background. Everyone loves flowers. Who doesn't love? love flowers, you know, they speak love, beauty, peace, everything lovely, you know, you find with flowers. And I have to say, it smells, I always come in here, I stop and I'm like, God, it smells so good in here. I'll run in just to get a fix. And <laughs> no, really, it smells so delightful and it's all natural. Mm -hmm. And I speak, I, and that was intentional because I wanted to speak to the five senses. So when you come in, I want you to have an experience and an encounter in my shop, not just with me, but with everything in the room. Visually, I want you to see the beauty. Musically, I want you to hear the music. Smell, I want you to smell the aroma. You know, taste with sipping petals. <laughs> you know? Yes, I have to talk to you, you about know? that. Okay. And, um, you know, and people are like, wow. You know, so when they come in and they're waiting for their flowers to be prepared, it's open. Most florists, they go in the back room and they create their arrangement and then they come out and it's done. Here you get an open view of us making the arrangements and there is um, a fascination with that to see a person curate and develop the flowers or the arrangement that it's you are you're in awe. I don't know why but people are just captivated by it and they look at it and they watch and they're like oh wow and they get to see you know and and it's inviting you know and they're like wow we've never seen it like this. Well, it's like this now. <laughs> yes. You know? you know, it is really very beautiful in here. You Thank know, you. It, it feels, um, it, I always say it feels magical when you realize that you're like sitting in a man-made place, but yet there's all these natural things around you growing mm -hmm. and you just feel the energy. I think also, and you, you probably could speak to this, is flowers exude oxygen. Mm -hmm. 
It's a, it, plants do. Yes, and that's one of my other terms, breathe life with flowers. Yes, you know? you know, and I would encourage people to get plants. Come in here and find a plant because it's good to have a few plants in your environment. Mm -hmm. When you talk about photosynthesis and flowers, you know, in the process of taking carbon dioxide and transitioning and making it into oxygen, flowers do provide that. They, they clean the air. Yeah. Okay. And they're aesthetically, they're beautiful to look at. Yes. And when you take care of something and you watch it grow, you know, at your hands and your care, there's, you know, he's a creator, yes. right? He created this creation, mm -hmm. you know, and God created us. And so we are able to create too. And there's a joy and a satisfaction that you get when you're able to create something with your hands and see your workmanship. You know, there's nothing that is more rewarding. I mean, I love teaching, don't get me wrong. I love teaching, I love working with young people and I see my handiwork with my students when they take their exams or help them get into schools and that's wonderful. But to see something that was an idea in my mind, you know, and I take what, you know, what's in creation, what God has created in nature, and I'm able to make something that has never, you know, been created in the design or how it looks. It's like, wow, you know, I, to be able to do all of this, to be able to have the time to create all of this, which really came out during the time of the pandemic, when I was able to stop and pause and really, um, reflect and look inward and, and get in touch, you know, with my spirit man, you know, spirit woman, you know, and um, to spend time in, to be very honest, to spend time, um, you know, praying and meditating and to spend time to see and really look and smell the flowers. And, and this is the creation of that time that I spent and I'm in awe. It is, you know. awe, it, awe, it is awe inspiring. And you talk about the spiritual connection. I, I think about, I think when I walk in here, I think, oh God, my grandmothers, both of them, they, even though they were from, one's from my father, one's from my mother, they were, had green thumbs. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like they could touch something and it would just grow. Where me, I have to really be cognizant. I'm gonna ask you this question. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure you've been asked this before. Do you talk to your plants to help them grow? Yes, I do. Why do you do that? I just... I know I just, why I do it. Why do you do it? <laughs> I just talk to my babies, you know, because I'm taking care of them, you know, and I want them to grow. And, you know, you want to speak, <laughs> speak life. Like I speak life to my daughters, you know, to my husband. I speak life to my flowers. You know, oh, you're so beautiful. Look at you just percolating today. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm like, okay, we're going to be on debut today. So I need you to please be at your best. <laughs> You're, really? That's oh, the conversation. And, and, I, and I pray before I make my arrangements. Oh. I do. Whoever the client is, mm -hmm. I do. I ask God, you know, just touch my hands and let me create what it is that they're looking for, the atmosphere they want to set. Little prayer. And I open my creativity and let it flow. There's and nothing it like a little prayer. Yeah, and it, and, 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 and it does. I put my heart into every arrangement I make. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. So what you're, now we're embarking upon the, um, we're approaching Mother's Day. Yes. Mother's Day is a big day for flowers. It is, it is. So what do you anticipate? It's funny because my team and I, we were talking today, you know, oh my goodness, Mother's Day is coming. What should we be doing? So we're planning now, you know, to try to determine what we're going to offer. Are we gonna have ready-made arrangements? Are we gonna have ready-made bouquets? We're waiting to see what orders come in, to see what people want, you know, and, um, you know, we're just trying to anticipate as much as possible to be prepared for what people might be interested in. And, um, you know, we also make pre-ordered arrangements that, you know, may not be on the website, may not be, you know, through Telefloor or something that you just want created that, you know, has nothing to do with a pre-made arrangement. And so we have to be ready that way too. Right. I imagine people are looking for that. You know, I know original. I, mm -hmm. When you weren't here, you know, on those times when I buy flowers, mm -hmm. you know, you go on. I don't want to mention like the, the commercial 
But I'm, I'm wondering, are you affiliated with FTD or Pro Flowers or any of those, those yes. companies? Yes, so we are affiliated with Teleflora. Uh, when we opened up, um, they reached out to us. So we're members with oh. Teleflora. Nice. So we do uh, make arrangements uh, that you might find on, on Teleflora. Yes, we do. That's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. Yes, it's, it's a wonderful uh, network to be a part of. So you're a part of a team of florists all across the country. So, you know, it's, it's awesome, you know, because you're able to service people close by locally as well as, you know, outside the state, you know, where you get to work with other florists as well. I imagine there are people that want to order, some, order something for somebody, but they don't live here, but who they want to order it from might live like across the street so they can call you. Mm -hmm. And they'd be all set. Yes, they, they'd be all set. We cover a specific geographic location. Mm -hmm. We cover, you know, Peekskill, Cortland, uh, some of Mayor Pack, Mohegan Lake, Montrose, Osning. So we will travel. We will travel and deliver at a cost. But we will, we will travel down, you know, Lower Westchester County, Southern Westchester County, and Northern Westchester County. Now I want to ask you this mm -hmm. question. You're doing something that I find like um, very interesting mm -hmm. that, that you're doing this as if I never thought of a, flor a florist doing this. You're doing something called Sip in Petals. Yes. And there is wine there. Tell yes. us about that. So um, Sip in Petals is um, a spinoff from, if you will, Sip in Paint. You know, you have sip and paint, you go mm -hmm. and you uh, have wine, you know, appetizers, or you bring your own food, mm -hmm. and then you um, paint a particular uh, image or object. Well, sip and petals is the same type of idea. So you're able to have the shop for two, two hours, four to 10 guests. You receive heavy appetizers from Kathleen's Tea Room. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have coffee, tea, wine, um, after you enjoy your, your meal. Uh, I then teach you how to make a fresh floral arrangement. You get a class, essentially, on how to make a fresh floral arrangement. You get to display your arrangement on the table. You get a full scape, linen, excuse me, napkins, china, uh, china wine glasses, music, ambiance. And it is a wonderful, intimate setting for you and your guests to enjoy and then you have lovely desserts and then you take your final pictures by the flower lady who has flowers on her mind and um, it's a wonderful experience it's a one and, and, they, and women love it and when you're in a crunch or you need to make flowers now you know how to make a quick arrangement for your dinner table you know should you should you need to do so so you create this elegant event. Yes. I think that's wonderful. Yes. And um, it sounds like from what I could see on your site that you're getting it catered by Kathleen's Tea Room. Yes. She yes. does travel. Yes. Yes. And she brings her full. Yes. So she'll, she'll bring all of, all of the appetizers and we'll set them up. And um, then we, we take it from there. And it's a wonderful partnership. Um, she's my mentor, you know, and it's a wonderful partnership to have her uh, have the willingness to, to pour into me in that way and support. So, um, you know, it's a wonderful thing and I'm really grateful, you know, for her confidence, for her friendship and for her insight and guidance. Yeah, Peekskill's really um, a friendly town. It is. And I think that it's really good when businesses support each other. Yes. And I saw the pictures and it looks like a lot of fun. It looks like it's very, very elegant Thank you. and delicious. And you have a floral arrangement. And does it come, do you get like a vase or anything? Uh, when, when they make their arrangements, mm -hmm. right. So it will come in um, a uh, preset uh, floral dish. Okay. And so, and then I will teach you from there how to create a floral arrangement using uh, foam and how you handle the foam, how you care for the flowers. And they learn from start to finish. They have to clean them, they have to prep them. And they do the whole process to see start to finish how you create a beautiful arrangement and to get insight on what florists do. We touch every petal, every stem of a flower. When you see all of those flowers in there, mm -hmm. our hands have touched every single stem, every head of the flower. It is, it's, in, it's intense work. Yeah, your energy's in there. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's intense work. We, it's detail oriented. 
Do you give advice on how to make a, a bouquet of flowers last longer besides that pa packet that goes in there? That does work, I know. It, well, those are floral industry secrets. But yeah, there are tricks and things that you know you can do to help your flowers last long. Like for example, hydrangea. I love One hydrangea. of the things, hydrangea, any hard stem flower, like a hydrangea or a rose, remember they bloom in the summer, right? Mm -hmm. So they like, they like the heat. So if you ever have a hydrangea and she looks like she's wilting and she's going to die, she's not. She's asking for more water. And if you take the stem and you smash it with a hammer or a sharp object mm -hmm. and then shave it a little around the stem and cut it on an angle and put her in nice, warm, hot. Think about when you take a nice, warm bath, mm -hmm. put it in hot water and give it 10 minutes and she will come back to life. Yes. And the same with roses, and they will drink, and they will open up, right. and, and they are just, you know, in their element. Whereas and they love it. Yes, whereas tulips, um, softer stem flowers, you want to put them in cold water. Because remember, they bloom in the spring in the cooler, oh. right? So they like cold water. Okay. And you put them in cold water, and you wrap them, wrap, wrap their body in a support, because when they drink, they fall out. When you feed, when you give tulips their water when they're first drinking, mm -hmm. you notice they'll they fall. They kind of wilt right, over. they wilt over. So if you wrap them just with some support, piece of paper, and they'll stay standing up straight. Yeah. But once they drink and they have their fill, they'll start to get perky again and stand up for you. Just like you and me. <laughs> <laughs> right? And you also have these <clears throat> lovely gift baskets. Yes. You know, I just want to sort of close out with that because mm -hmm. a gift basket is usually one of the best things, you know? I mean, I, I like to give gift, mm -hmm. gift baskets to people mm -hmm. when they're in the hospital, anything. Mm -hmm. So, so you, tell us a little bit about that. So um, if you go on my website, I have his and her uh, rejuvenation baskets, and it's everything mind, body, and spirit. So when you receive a his and her or his or her basket for a female, she'll get um, everything catering to the body, um, lotions, body wash, uh, facial creams, uh, Manny Petty set, nail polish, a journal to write in, mm. uh, an inspirational book, a hot cocoa, um, hot tea, some soup, maybe some warm socks, um, or flip flops if it's a summertime. Sometimes I do a throw and you get a throw. It can be as uh, you know, inexpensive or as expensive as you want it to be. So if you want a more custom and pricier uh, basket, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want a more gourmet basket, we can, we can do that also. Everything, you know, made to order, how you would like recipients to receive uh, the gift. So affordable to the more pricey, we can, we can do that. And we have baskets for him too. Ooh. For him too. Let's get him one. Mm -hmm. So Pamela Johnson, you're a lot more than just a floral shop. Yeah. Yeah. This is almost like a one-stop gift shop. It, yeah. I think that you'll be, I, I believe that you'll be very successful. Thank you. You know, because your heart's in it. Thank you. And I'm going to suggest to the audience before we close that one really nice thing to do for someone, I had a coworker once whose husband would, would send her at the office, we were all jealous, once every two weeks, fresh flowers. But that's a really nice gesture. Somebody that you know, someone who loves you, would be really, really happy with you if you sent them some beautiful flowers from Lily of the Valley Floral Design yes. in Peekskill, New York. Yes. And we're gonna have we're gonna have Pamela Johnson back because I really enjoy her. Oh, thank She's you. just so full of great energy. You have to come in the store and meet her. She's oh, the best. Thank you. So until next time, bye bye.